Okay, so to begin with 2.3 inverse graphs, um, to graph an inverse, you simply have to reflect it across the line y equals x. Uh, sometimes what helps is to go ahead and make a table and switch the x's and y's. And what I mean by this is uh, I will often rewrite the table, the x column. So I would have x, y in a table, and I'll actually rewrite it with my x on the side so that then I can have my new X and my new Y. Uh, so I will show you what I mean. Um, with this first example, looking at 2A, um, I see that it crosses through the point negative one zero. So if I bring that negative one over, so now I'm plotting in blue um, the point uh, zero, negative one. So zero, negative one. So there's a point there. Uh, the next one that I see as a point is um, zero, comma, three, which then becomes three, comma, zero. So there will be a point here. So now, if I were to connect those with a straight line, about, you know, that's very rough, um, but that would make a reflection of the purple line if we were to reflect it over this line here. Again, not perfect, I'm sorry. But that reflection um, over that red line. So now the same concept works. Now this next example, we don't have numbers, but we should be able to follow the same concept. So let's redraw this red line. So this is our y equals x line that we're reflecting over. And you can also think of this as the fold. So if you were to fold um, this over the red line, if the purple arrow were some ink and you were to fold it in half, what would be the image on the other side? In which case, it would look something like this. Something like that. Uh, it's obviously not perfect, but close. Um, so why don't you go ahead and pause the video and try C and D on your own. Okay, so now um, you should have that red line in the center and you should be able to now sketch out the other side. Again, very difficult to do on an iPad, so I apologize. But um, you'll notice that answer D is actually the same thing, that when you fold it in half, it becomes the same thing. Um, so its inverse is the identity. So when we take the inverse of the original function, we just get back the original function, um, which is um, the identity. Um, so that is that. That one's pretty quick. Make sure you click over and watch 2.4 as well.